is Sharon Pearson. I am standing here in an amazing room at the Coaching Institute Head Campus in Melbourne with an incredible room of advanced coaches. Woo! We are rocking out an incredible business training and I have an amazing person joining us today. She is, she is the most successful coach, the most successful coach in business in Australia today. She founded the Coaching Institute 15 years ago and since then we've gone on to impact millions of lives around the world in over 81 countries. She's here today sharing what it takes to create business success, what it takes to run a successful coaching business. One that's way beyond her wildest dream when she first started. And we're not here to talk about how it started or how she did it, how she does it today. What it takes to run the coaching institute today and create the success that it is today. Would that be awesome? Yes! yes. yes. So she founded the coaching institute, she, created, she wrote the first diploma of life coaching, she went on to create the world's first and only research-based coaching methodology of metadynamics, which you guys are rocking out with. Yes. And she's also, she brought together over, I think over a hundred coaches, professional coaches in Australia, and together they founded on, they founded the International Coach Guild on a mission to raise the standards of coaching. She's an incredible woman who's done incredible things, and joining her on stage is the amazing trainer who is literally the embodiment of everything that the Coaching Institute stands for. He is living his dream today as a successful coach, a successful trainer, a successful speaker. He's been rocking out with you guys so yes. far yeah. this week. Yeah. Will you please join me in welcoming the amazing Sharon Pearson and Matt Lowe. I just yeah, said, thank you come, so come, much. Come. I just said to Matt, that happens everywhere I go. News agents, <laughs> bakers. Coffee, coffee shops, <clears throat> cinemas. <laughs> cinemas is yeah, embarrassing. Cinemas, I know. <laughs> Makes going outside super awkward. But the important thing is, is having glam in my handbag everywhere I go. So she can yeah. do that incredible well. Which yeah. I'd be lost without yeah. that welcome. Yeah. And she does such a good job, doesn't she? She does. <laughs> so thank you for joining me on stage today. Oh, you're so welcome. Thank you so much for having me. It's, a, and thank it's you an all. absolute thank pleasure. You for because I'm doing an encore with you and hanging out. Well, because we thought it would be something that you guys would want to be part of. Yeah. You obviously get to listen to the podcast, but you'll you're in it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. which is which is really wonderful. Yeah. So we thought what we'd do is rather than do as Glam said, rather than do how I began, which I am interviewed endlessly. What yeah. were your first steps? What was your first million? What was the first? I have recorded everything about yeah. how and I you've began. done that so many times. I've done it so many times. And, it, and this isn't for my entertainment. This is, okay, well, what does it take to run eight-figure business? This is very rarely <coughs> do we get to talk about, well, what is it to run an eight-figure business and to run and have new, I have not owned yeah. numerous businesses. We, we don't tend to talk about where it's at now. So I would like yeah. to do that because I think the coaching community gets a lot of examples of how to start. Completely. But I want to share lots of examples of if you start like that, where do you get... <coughs> Excuse me, can I have a glass of water? Is Glenn? that okay with you guys? Yeah. Yes. Okay, yeah. so let's do that. I think there's a lot of people in, in the industry that are newly successful. So they go from, I, I don't know how to do it, to I've, you know, I've done my first $10,000, $20,000 a month or something I like that. I think most new coaches quit. Yeah. I think that's the reality. Yeah, yeah. You know, why am I successful after this long? I lasted. <laughs> yeah. A lot of it's lasting. I'm yes. playing smart stuff. Yeah, but completely. my first year, I would network and... I kept meeting first-year coaches. Yeah. I've met one five-year coach yeah. in my first year. Yeah. Is that your experience? You meet a lot of new coaches? Yeah. Just out last, yeah. all the new coaches. And I see, new, I see a business start. <laughs> I know, it's kind of funny, but, but it's, it's what I did. It's a glass of water. Thank you so much. So I, Thank you so I'm much. out last. I was never going to quit, so I burnt the bridges on doing anything else. Yeah. Because I tried the I'll put one toe in the water and see if it works out for me. Like, it's going to do anything if I've just got one toe in the water. Yeah. So it just became all in very early on. Yeah. So things took off. The moment yeah. I did that, that's things yeah. took off. I think it's also your values are very different to most, most business owners. I think most business owners have values of quick now and it doesn't matter how I treat other people. I see mm -hmm. that a lot mm -hmm. versus... Just did a conversation about it over there with yeah, the potential yeah. somebody wants you to work here. Totally. Versus the very long-term thinking... Mm. do the right thing and yeah. take care of people and how, how do you see because you've been in the industry for uh, yeah. so, okay um, <laughs> <laughs> since before it was a thing in australia yeah 
That's a really so long I've been term. in coaching before Facebook. <laughs> 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 wait, wait, wait. It's personal fast. Yeah. Before, so people will be listening to this on Spotify, YouTube. I None in, of them existed. Yeah, I was in, they weren't born. I was in coaching before there was the internet. Yeah. Email was just, yeah. So there was no internet. So to yeah. get leads back in the day was the newspaper or newspaper. magazines or speaking. Yeah. There was radio ads. There was, and it was very, very expensive because they had one pretty well, they had the whole market sewn up. So yeah. today it's so easy. <laughs> today doing business is so it's easy. Com- yeah. So it was pre internet. Yeah. Within the first year the internet came into being, I was there for its yeah. Yeah. public inception. And so because you've been there for that so amount long. of time, you must have seen so many people come and go, oh. like you were saying before. What's the difference? What? Why? Why? Why have you stayed, and why have they not stayed? Well, I'm going to make myself look good with this answer. You get that because yeah. we can only see ourselves through the best frames possible. <clears throat> yep. So there may be aspects of why TCI is still going so strong and doing so well after all these years that are bad reasons, and I don't know that. Do you yeah. get how you can only know what you know about yourself and yeah. you're not seeking? So maybe this is not true, but the best of my ability, the differences are. Longev- a longevity attitude. I'm in this for life. I'm not yeah. in this for, I can't even say the words, quick pop. Yeah, totally. That hurts. Yes, it's, completely. I'm here for the long game. I gotta, why, would you, why would you bother? That's what I think. Why, yeah. would you, why would you waste your time? I'm here to discover how much I really mean my, mean my values. Yeah. Like really when my back's to the wall and it's really tough and yeah. it's not convenient, yeah. do I live my values? Because yeah. that's a measure of me inspiring myself. Yeah, and you've had many opportunities for that to be. Yeah, I could have gone the other way. I could have gone to the dark side. Yeah. I am doing this because it meets my need for significance to be known. Like we were laughing down the back of the room when Glam was so beautifully saying, most successful coach in Australasia. I went, weird if I wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> and he goes, kind of awkward. <laughs> but I get significance yeah. from. It would be a shit introduction. It would be really poor <laughs> It's like. The, so the know, second best coach in Melbourne. Yeah, doing okay, <laughs> doing well, doing really well. About to branch into Geelong. <laughs> <laughs> so I get significance from, I, I draw huge power, like an energizer, yeah. from being great at what I do. Yeah, it, it's su- super resourceful I, as well. Like, this is great. Oh, it fires the fuck out of me to yeah. know I'm great at something and I pour unapologetically and unselfconsciously all my passion and energy into rocking and doing it and demonstrating it as we did last week. Like I just, it just, you saw it light me up. Yeah. I'm like a Christmas tree the whole time I get to demonstrate. So I'm fired up yeah. and it fuels my fire yeah. to be great at it, which means I try harder or to learn more yeah. to be great at it and yeah. it just keep self yeah. perpetual. this free energy. Yeah. It's free energy. Yeah, which is wonderful. And I, I think love it. most people come from the model. We were talking about this, I think this morning or yesterday, most people have the model of, um, okay, my life needs to have balance. <laughs> <Is> that <laughs> That's a thing. People are searching for still it. Still search for And balance. so we were talking, what are you balancing out? You're balancing out the holidays with not wanting to be around work and it's such a broken model compared to what well, if, the whole what if you Well, the whole model got introduced it? for the industrial age. Yeah. So it was eight hours factory. The porn would go, everyone had to go to work, you had to do something with your kids, Plug in. to school for the same number of hours so they could all learn how to turn up at the factory floor because most of us back then were worker bees. Yeah. And there's nothing wrong with that, but that's just, literally just society was. was when all the people flooded off the farms into the cities, the sound of the horn signified six days back then work and we had to do something with the kids. So we yeah. all come from this kind of mill, yeah. a production line. Yeah. And that's where balance comes from, eight hours of work, eight hours of rest, eight hours of sleep. So to yeah. me, it's a construct. It's a cultural construct. I don't yeah. believe in it. I have a different construct. Yeah. I have passion fuels me. It's free fuel. Yeah. So I'm going to do what's passionate. I'm going to do what's hard until it's passionate. Yeah, that's really important. I don't think many people can get through that is can we push through the hard my like because the passion, the, the passion is there. My like of it, my liking it is yeah. not the point. Yeah. It is about is that – is me not mastering this getting in the way of me living all the things I've just mentioned. So yeah. I love making a difference. So I love the significance I have from being the best at something. I love, oh, my God, I love hearing from people who are rocking out and I can serve. I just, that fires me up. I love having a place. So this whole began, this whole thing began with Shazaland. I've told you that. Yes. So you guys have heard of Shazaland? No. You wouldn't have heard of Shazaland. I'm so sorry. <laughs> 
<laughs> we'll get him some tickets. We'll get we'll some tickets. Yeah. Sad for you. <laughs> <laughs> so I was working out in the world, in the real world, I didn't like it. I didn't like the harshness. I didn't like the lack of um, people being able to be transparent. I didn't think that people had to put on a front and had to act a certain way. Yeah. I wanted Totally. Can we just it's get so the exhausting. walls down? Can we just the be? social norms and the bullshit? Yeah. That can, are if with. you want to brag, because you're proud of yourself, brag. If you're feeling hurt about something, you should be able to say it. And just it it, it filters all the way through to how we answer the phone here. It's everything. As humans, like yeah. as a human being. Yeah. And I wasn't experiencing humanity. I was experiencing this puffed up version of niceness and politeness, yeah. and with veneer of niceness, and underneath people undercutting each other or. Yeah. And I don't get it. Yeah. So I just thought, I'm going to create my own bubble. Yep. I'm going to create Shazaland. Yeah. And to join <laughs> Shazaland, I know, I know. I, I no lacking in confidence. Yeah. <laughs> to join Shazaland, you've got to bring your inner freak, you've got to be yourself, and you've got to be comfortable with the fact that you're not perfect, and you're going to get some help if you want it. And if you don't, you don't have to. But if you're going to do that, you're going to do that for others as well. So the cycle can just self-perpetuate. It's just free fuel, free fuel. Yeah. And so that became Shazalay in the very beginning. Now, I was really bad at attracting people who had my vision for Shazalay at the beginning, right. so it was the school of hard knocks. Yeah, inside but the now, business. In, in the business. Yeah. Just yeah. I attracted all the wrong people yeah. because I didn't know what it took mm. in terms of me being congruent with my values yeah. and having a team around us who are the same yeah. and just being singing the same song, was same song was unavailable to us. Yeah. Then when we all started singing the same song, we somehow just that code cracked. Mm. That was years ago now. That We've been doing eight figures now for, I've lost count how many years, over 10 years. Mm. Um, that's which wonderful, is, isn't which it? Is that's phenomenal. phenomenal. So the consistency yeah. is there. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. The consistency is really there that we're on song most of the time because we treat people who have the same kind of ethos. They love Shazaland. They, they want to be part of well, their own version of it. You want to be yeah. part of your own ecosystem where all of that applies all the yeah. time. Yeah. And the shutters don't every day again come down, and I can't believe you said that. It's just yeah. it's, we're okay yeah. together. So like, we Shazaland has become TCI, yes. the Coaching Institute. Yeah, but it's built on the same frame. Yeah, don't come if we don't if you don't want to hang. If you, if you don't yeah. want to be irreverent, if you don't want some humour, if you're really going to get stuck up about my language and shit that doesn't matter because you've got an idea of how society needs me to behave as a woman, you're not in the right place. Yeah, and I want to be an example for women who dig that. That I'm not defined by the fact that I got lumps here and not down here. That I'm fearful. Yep. That fearful. someone who's got lumps here and not down there can have opinions and be bold and be resilient and be assertive and be opinionated and not always get it right. And that's not always okay. And so I just want to be an example and encourage everyone else to be an example of that and to exactly. encourage that as I you love do. It. I love it. And I love how you created this world because I think so many people put in a lot of effort to try to change everyone out there which is a complete waste of time yep. instead of just creating this phenomenal world and just invite people in mm. that are a match for it. And we talk about it all the time. It's like we just, a lot of people just love this community more than the real world. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah, weird. That's I weird. talk about it all the time. I'm like, sometimes I go out there mm. and I'm like, oh, fuck. Mm. It's, I a remember. it's a horrible place. I remember. I go into companies some, sometimes, as you know, they're looking to hire me and I think I understand the problems you have. It's nothing to do with revenues. Yeah. It's how you thought about your business going in. Yeah. You thought that it was about making money. You didn't think it was about adding value and being yeah. generous and zigging when others zag yeah. and providing a, a place for people to express themselves in a way that has meaning to them. Totally. So our success is all of There's obviously so much more commercial reality and yeah. marketing reality, yeah. but a lot of it comes from that kind of ethos. It's like, man, are we able to be as you – do you know the value of irreverence? You know when you can be with someone you trust so much where you don't have to be self-conscious with them? Yeah. Mm. That's irreverence. That's yeah. I can say it and you're not going to judge me. You're going to get what I meant. And mm. There's a lot of mm. permissiveness in that conversation. TCI is that. Mm. And if it's not that for you yet, where can, where can you tap into TCI so it's that? Because I know it is this right now. It's happening right now. And if you're not experiencing it that, where can we help you so you can experience it that? Yeah. Is that making sense? Yeah. So it's the idea is to... Get the gear into top gear, which is freedom to make mistakes, yeah. freedom to be flawed, yeah. freedom to hit a brick wall and not know what to do but be willing to dig in to figure out how yeah. whilst you're making mistakes and you're still flawed. Yeah. It's all of that and it's celebrating success. I was just saying in a, another interview, the friends you want in your life can handle when you fuck up 
and handle it when you rock. Yeah. yeah. Real friends can handle both. Yes. Now I've had friends, I'm sure you have, who are here for you when you're down because they just love the rescuing and they'll yeah. just, they want to be in the pity party. Hate the success. But then you rock, you've changed. Damn right I have, sister. Loving it. <laughs> but they're not loving it. Always the other way around. You've always got to be up. You've always got to have it together. You can't fall too far. You can't look too vulnerable. You yeah. How am I doing? Yeah. And then you feel really down and you need a hug? Yeah. Really? Yeah. I'm surprised. I had a coach say the other day, she, um, she uh, one of her clients messaged her the, um, and said, no, one of her friends messaged her and said, um, I saw a video you did the other day that was really vulnerable and, you know, it made me feel really uncomfortable oh, about wow. the type of person that you are and I really want you to go back to being more positive. And <laughs> I was just like, wow, just yeah. let that one go. Yeah, yep, yep, yep. And I wonder why that she's blocking that for people in her life. Yeah. Because... That's you, that's her telling you where she's feeling really jammed up. She doesn't even know it yet. Totally. She thinks it'll be fixed. It totally. will be fixed totally. if you bottle you. Totally. Isn't that interesting? It's amazing. Mm. I love that you said a reverence because I think this is this is the part of the secret sauce of TCI yeah. is to hire people that want that. Yep. The contrast, I think, is a HR department. Yeah. Everyone keeps telling me with the business's size I need one. Yeah. No. No. So... To me, a HR department is children police, mm. <laughs> right? Because people can't be mature and can't say, because every now and handle then. Handle the problem. Yeah. How many times have you and I handled the problem? It's all we do. I've had, I've had, it doesn't happen every, uh, I've, maybe once a year, someone in my team will come up to me and say, this person said this. And I'll say, how can I help? Why like, am I like here? What, what do you want me to do? Have you spoken to them yet? Mm. Go speak to them. Yeah. Instead of this weird, can you speak to this person? Can yeah. we have a meeting without you here? And mm. it's just it, it presupposing no one can handle anything mm. slows everything down, mm. and it's just crazy. Well, I think it's an important part of our success. So let can we use? Yeah, us let's here? do it. So we have not for many things, but many things conversations mm. like closed door, not behind closed door. Mm. I'm not so good at that. Mm. Neither are you. We don't really mind no, who's I, there. I prefer just, I no, just yeah. it's happening, so let's deal. Yeah. And our conversations will be fierce, mm. like really fierce. Mm. Like, and broken. Mm. Like, you think that's how we arrive? It may be that long. Seven years. That long? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. It's been a cakewalk. I'm sorry. It's been easy. <laughs> <laughs> but this is what I know about. The greatness needs to be unleashed. Yeah. Nobody comes ready made. Yeah. No one. Yeah. And if they come from regular corporate world, they're not looking to unleash greatness. They're yeah. looking to unleash conformity, yeah. compliance, fitting in, staying in your lane. Yeah. Ugh, yeah. All the stuff that is just poison to me. Yeah. So I kind of got to deprogram people when they turn up. Yeah. It's like, it it's, took me many years. Yeah. Many. Yeah. Many. <laughs> I heard what the fuck a lot. <laughs> <laughs> but here's what I know. If Matt, this is the same for everyone in TCR, if Matt can't handle direct, accurate message, he can't handle living it. If he can't hear it, he can't live it. Yeah. So all I was doing all those years working with Matt and other people that I helped adopt, I'm not here anymore, but when I was part of this, was I am just testing, like literally. Yeah. Can I take it? Can you take it? Yeah. Because if you can't take the conversation, you can't take the reality of the business. Does that make sense? If you can't handle being pushed in a conversation, you are not going to like how much you're going to get pushed in business. Because mm. business is going to shove you around a lot more than any conversation. So anybody I could turn off, I wasn't trying to turn them off, but if me delivering accurate truth turns someone off, they are not trustworthy when the truth happens and I'm not there. Yeah. Like I happened to be on guard. I caught a moment where someone, could be Matt or anyone, didn't fully embrace our values or didn't fully live the truth of who they can be or made a poor judgment because that whatever, they want to bring in criteria that we've discussed. If I don't call it, they're going to do the same thing next time and not even know. But if I call it and they still don't see it, they are never going to see it and they're always going to be a business liability. How am I doing here? Yeah. So I think TCI is trolled by fire in the most wonderful way. Completely. What do you think? Yeah, completely. And I think that it, 
It invites people to start living more successful values and more successful attitudes. Because it's, I don't think we've ever really come across someone who just has these values no. and has these ideas. They come in. In a hiring process, we're, we're very, very direct about, are you sure you're going to want this? Are you sure you're going to, are you sure? We give people a lot of feedback. In the I'm not seeing you leave. I'm noticing you're not really. And because we want to just check in, can they actually, because it's very easy in an interview to say, yes, yes, oh, I love that. Everyone says that. We love your values. They're amazing. Completely, They're telling my values. Um, but then it's an opportunity for someone to step up into their best version of themselves to be able to actually start living the values. Um, someone, and you discover within a week whether it's true. Completely. Uh, I, I said to someone the other day, I was hiring for a sales role here, um, and they asked about turnover, and I said we have a much higher turnover mm. than many companies. We do. Because I think she was looking for me to give her certainty around. Oh, no one ever leaves. Yeah. And I'm loves like, us all the time. Because like, well, some, pe- people, some people say that they want it, and then they change their mind when they realise what it takes yep. to be this successful. Our probation period, they, isn't it, that 90-day period, train wreck. Yeah. True story. Yeah. Not said with any self-consciousness whatsoever. Yeah. Because what people say in the interview they want, I really want to challenge. Yeah. I don't know what that means. I really want to work hard. I really want to believe in something. I really want to be part of a culture where it matters that I show up. This is what we hear. I don't know, but you yeah, hear it every hear. day. Yeah. Are you sure that's what you want? Okay. Trial. They blow up if it's not authentically true because all those things are actually the truth here. Mm. It is incredibly challenging. Mm. It is incredibly hard work. Mm. You are going to get feedback in real time. Mm. We had a guy leave after half a day the other yeah. day. Well, my record is trying to hire a CEO a few years ago. Yeah. This is the best story ever for how it is around here. Oh, yes. I, I know this story. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> this is before we had a stable leadership team. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I was trying to hire a CEO because, again, my goal since I began the business to be step out of the business and have the business thrive without me, that was always the vision of TCI. So I think it's great that you're here because you're seeing in action one of the only coaches in the world who's managed to achieve that. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. Think of some of the big names you know. They're still on stage. It's them. Every month. Yeah. You're with me? Yeah. I am not. I'm here as a volunteer because yeah. I'm annoying. <laughs> basically <laughs> and I always thought I'd be the model for my students of well this is possible where yeah. was I going with that yeah um, you were about to tell the story about the CEO oh the story yeah <laughs> so I thought I'd hire a CEO as part of my next step yes I'd already tried to hire two they'd cost me a fortune not work gone badly gone badly horrible. not good times not good times so I'd keep coming back in turn the business back around so I'm going to get there I thought this was the guy he came in for a day's trial. Were you there when he said it? Yep. yep. Oh, I don't know if I was there when he said it, but I was part of it. So at lunchtime, before lunch, so Wednesday's Wednesday wow. Yeah. And our tie team gets together and yep. everyone wows each other based on the values. And we rock out. It's and we amazing mean it, and, and it's, it's passionate. Yeah. So he saw that meeting? Yeah. Yeah, so he, he lasted till the wow meeting on Wednesday. <laughs> then he came to me and said, I don't think I'm going to stay I think you're all just too passionate. <laughs> that was the first time someone said that. <laughs> and we thought to ourselves, fucking go us. <laughs> how, good, how good is that? What a, what a good benchmark. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We yeah. outpassioned the future CEO. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I didn't try and convince him to stay. Isn't that a great story? Yeah. 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 Um, my next great failure, hiring CEOs. Oh, well, <laughs> this is, you, you're getting this, this skimmed top of the yeah. depth of the mistakes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm just hitting the high spots of it. Um, the next attempt, do you remember? No, naming no one, but yeah. I was there. <laughs> so... <coughs> This was really bad. I hired them. I hired them. So They're with us for quite some time. Yeah, 90 days. So I hired someone. That's how bad my decision making was around this and how I wasn't thinking critically about it. Yeah. And they were buttoned down. They had operations manager go around telling people to go have their afternoon break. Mm-hmm. I got a message. So I got a PM from this person saying, just want to check in if you're working too much. And like, I, I didn't even reach out to her. Mm. It was, I just want to check in. I think maybe you're working too much. Just here if you want a voice. Mm. It was like this weird, it was like a coup. Yeah, yeah. So she went looking for where people could be working too hard. She hired 
an additional 10 people, six of them went into the WOW team, our support team, mm. and productivity, efficiency, and results plummeted mm. Mm. to a 20% of what they'd been before these extra people mm. came in. It was horrible. Yeah. I was going to run the business at a loss for the first time at that point in 12 years, I think. Yeah. 11 years. I'd yeah. had it for 11 years then. Yeah. And this was the meeting I had with her. The business isn't making money. Everybody needs a 100% pay rise. And if you can't, if the company can't afford it, which it can't, it needs to come out of your personal money. You're allowed to mock me. I did really, really badly with this hire. <laughs> it's horrible. Yeah, it's just how, how disrespectful is this? Yeah. Yeah, it's just, did you, are you appalled at this? this is, it's like it's unbelievable. It's so bad, it's, it's nearly unbelievable. unbelievable. It's like. And I said, I can't possibly give everybody a 50% or 100% power. That's right, just give it to me. That's <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. This is like, I remember this conversation. I remember this sinking feeling, you've done it again, Sharon. Mm. You, you misjudged, you misgaged. Yeah. yeah. Good intentions and good words have added up to just a share of shit. Yeah. <sighs> they left and the business was a million dollars in debt. Oh, jeez. And the general manager, when I pointed out, you've run up a million dollars in debt? That's not me. Who would you have me speak with? You're the CEO. I just don't like the level of responsibility. What? You're a quarter of a million plus 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 CEO. Yeah, but you know what it's like getting feedback. I think I got it wrong. Yeah. Brett, what do you reckon? Yeah. yeah. That's bullshit. That's bullshit. <laughs> so he left that afternoon. Yeah. And who noticed? Yeah. None of you. Yeah. We, I remember you came up to me and you said, this person's leaving, this person's leaving. Does this affect you? And I remember thinking, no. No. I don't think so. No. And then I called a meeting and said, why didn't any of you slap me over the head three months ago? Yeah. Do you remember that? The yeah. slap over the head being like, why yeah. didn't you slap me before that? And then it, it gave me a, a is really... Is this interesting to you? Yeah. Yeah. This is the reality of... I... One, of the, one of the things that, because I was in the WOW team then, I was helping out in the WOW team and um, in the student support team, and we had 10 people or something like that and were sucking, and we took that down to, I think at the time, three people and nailed it. Every benchmark was hit. Like just nailed it, which With gave three me- three versus 10. Because every now and then if we're in the team and every now and then someone will say out, they'll be like, we need another person. I'm like, we do not need We do person. not. Another person is not the solution to this. But they don't how know because yeah. they don't, when, the, when we say it's how you think, they don't get how much we know, it's how we think. It's how we think. Thinking is everything. Same number of students, same demands, same, how am I doing it? Same program, yeah. sure it's the same resources. So it's not a resource problem, it's a resourcefulness problem. Yeah. And here's the key. When you get a decent sized business, if people can't handle that message, they're not the right person on the bus. Because yeah. right. you're having to reassure them they can handle it and they're not believing they can handle it. You spend your whole time trying to convince them that they can handle it. Yeah. And they're not doing the thing. They're not finding a way. One of the things, my, there's a third example of trying to hire a CEO. <laughs> <laughs> You'll get there. I'm there. Yeah. I'm there. This is even further. Well, we instead of having a CEO now, we have a we have a really functional leadership. Team. Yeah, you have. Yeah. Go you, the first yeah. team. Yeah. Carry on. It wasn't like that back then. So back even further, the other another one that I tried to and I did. <laughs> I am nothing if not tenacious. Mm. She's allowed three mistakes, and no, she used them all up. up. <laughs> no more. There's four CEOs I failed at. Uh, this one didn't believe that they could help the sales team. I said, well. And they said, you need to convince me. I said, but if I have to convince you to believe something, doesn't that mean it's my belief and not yours? Yeah. And they're in tears because I wouldn't convince them to change their belief. So there's no self-accountability, no self-regulation, no self-anything. Yeah. It was just all on me. Was this the most recent one? No. Oh. No, no, this goes way back. You were there. Yeah. You were part of that one as well. Ah. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> It's the common denominator. There it is. There it is, the whole time. It's not me. It was me. <laughs> <laughs> There's another one. Yeah. And the last one, this is even before, or just after that. They joined our business and brought in a giant board covered in photos and memorabilia and special treasures and gifts from the company that just left about how much they were missing them. Oh, no. 
So they'd been with us for a week and this giant board that took up a whole wall turned up, covered up all the KPIs so they could show everyone in the new business how much the old business still means to her. It's insane. I'm seeing the thing is I'm a little bit slow. Yeah. <laughs> but if you don't, not willing, I'm okay. I'm actually fine because the point is if you're not willing to make huge mistakes, you're not going to get huge gains. And we now have an amazing yeah. leadership team and I don't work here yeah. and I do get to just drift in and take over cool shit that I want to yeah. play with, yeah. which is wonderful. That's oversimplifying what I do, but I am not in the day-to-day because I took the risks back then. I knew when I tried to hire my first PA and it was such a train wreck, my first PA ran out of the building and left her shoes and handbag behind. <laughs> that's, did, a, that's, a, that, that's a benchmark right there. A, <laughs> that's a, is it, did she take her handbag? Uh, you didn't do it that yeah. way. <laughs> she had to send her boyfriend back in to clean. So that's yeah. how bad I was. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. I knew then how hard it was. You know, why are you listening to me? (laughs) Do I know anything? But I lived then, that was 17 years ago, whatever, that until I got a stable um, technician team, you know, 45K, 50K back then, I had to learn how not to. So I had to get through sucking, sucking, sucking to get to the rocking. And I just knew it was the same with this. I had to get through the sucking. But to get through the sucking, you can't do it in your head. Yeah. You have to actually. You have to give it a go. You actually have to give it a go. Because until you commit and say yes, you don't mean you want to suck. You don't mean you're prepared to learn what it takes. You just mean hypothetically you'd rather it didn't go wrong. Yeah. Whereas I was willing for it all to go wrong, including a million dollars of debt I had to trade this out of over the next three months. And I did. I had to be willing to risk all of that to get to the stage where I knew how to do it in a more functional way. Is that making sense? Yeah. 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 So. Sucking can't be done hypothetically. You have to suck out loud. You actually have to suck out loud. You have to give the thing a go. You have to, you, you've got you to suck to. out loud. Yeah. And it's so easy to say that we can accept TCIs here and it's everywhere. We're in 81 countries. How good is that? It's amazing. It's fabulous. It's so and, and it's And it seems so effortless on the surface, but no. it's built on all of these moments of true hurt mm. and setback like we're laughing about the stories but you imagine a million dollars of debt and your two <coughs> leaders leaders walked out and you're left with the debt it's like well thanks so much and then one of them complained about me mm. they went to a regulatory body and complained about me and asked for a refund on the program that they'd enrolled in when they joined like the level of in for a dig that occurred was on so many levels. Yeah. So true. we're laughing, but that's really hard. Mm. Like try it on. Like you've mm. done the right thing by this person. You've paid them. You hired them in good faith. <clears throat> You're doing your best to help them rock. You want them to succeed. Of course I want them to succeed. I'm risking everything. I'm handing them my business. They rack a million-dollar debt, debt up walk out, complain about me to everyone and quit the program and demand a refund, even though they've finished the program. The level of infradict, that hurts. Mm. It is to your heart and core hurt. Mm. It is betrayal. It's been, I thought we were onto something. Mm. We weren't. We got it wrong. But you know what? I'm going to do the right thing by you right up until the last day and I got this. So we laugh, but oh, my God, to do this level of business yeah. and keep turning up for it, yeah. it's you lot. have days you think it better be worth it Yeah, because the heartache and the hurt and the setbacks, the stories I have of people joining my school as a team member, copying everything, copying my database, Stealing everything, starting up another school that I now hear some of our members have spoken about and considered joining. It's literally just rebranded their brand and they're still going. This is like five years, seven, yeah. seven years later. Yeah. So you've got to take that. And then you say, why don't you sue? I'm having a life. I'm living and we're doing great and we're doing fine. But that's the kind of thing you're up against. It's the level of imitation. You know, and then people say, imitation is the best form of splarity. Flattering when you're speaking about that the first values violation, that's a clue, isn't it? Yeah. And you're already giving them the same yeah. feedback. Yeah. And the second values violation, you say, well, there weren't a values match. They're great. What are your values? You didn't know. I said, so how can they anyone ever mismatch what you don't know? Aren't they just matching anything because you have anything? 
True? Yeah. So we do our best to hire on the values, but what really happens is in shaping people to want the values. Yeah. Because most people need to be educated on what it means to actually move the values because they've come from companies that just haven't cared about that. Mm. Mm. The other thing that I think is really crucial at TCI is a matrix model of leadership. There's no hierarchy on feedback. It's huge. There's no feedback, no, no hierarchy. The feedback can go in any direction. It can come from you, it can come from me, come from Matt and go across, up, mm. any direction. Even more than that, it's, re it's required that it, it has to required. happen that way. So yeah. I would give feedback to a staff member for not giving someone feedback. So there would be a moment where yeah. they had to give feedback yeah. and I know they saw it and I'm like, so you didn't see it. Yeah. Why are you not saying that? I remember yeah. you used to say that to me I when I was like, yeah. like why, why haven't you said anything? Hmm. So if you observed it and you know it's not a values match and you said nothing, that makes yeah. you part of the same problem, you're not living your values. Yeah. And that fee and you get that feedback long enough, people wear out and leave, or people get it and step up. And they love it. And they love it. And yeah. like, man, it could never be any other way. I also think that these these traits that you've created inside the business, now I live them and breathe them. But when I first came in, I, I thought, this is somewhere where I want to go, but I don't have this yet. And mm. so I wanted to learn how to do it. But now I have this in me. I can't think of any other way to do it. No. But I also within that, see how this actually creates, I think, the best type of person. Yeah. Because I know for me, I've become who I am who because of be. you. Because you're and because and, of TCI. And you're being who you want to be. Glam, who's not here, mm. same thing. Yeah. Like I'll, I'll be forever. I, I'll, I'll, and I've... I've, I've I'll always say this to you, but I'll forever be in debt for you and this business because of who I've been able to become. Thank you. Because of your standards and, and, and the lifting up. And because for me, I've always, no one else has ever held me accountable for shit. Yeah. Or just yeah. let me get away. Or, Do you know what I mean? Or the pattern of you testing. Do I really mean it? I'm not going to quit on you. Yeah. Like there were plenty of times you've tested me. Yeah, like, I probably tested you way too long. I wasn't going to say that, but yeah. now it's there. <laughs> I think there was, there was times where Sharon said, have I passed the fucking test? And I'm like, yeah. yeah. That, that, that's been a number of times in our relationship. And I literally say, have I passed the fucking test yet? Like, all you're doing is testing me now. You've got the answer. You know what's different. You know how to do different. You're not doing different. You're just testing me to see if I'm going to stay loyal to you. I'm not quitting on you. So now what the fuck are you going to do? Your move. And you say, well, I ain't quitting. Well, you have to solve that problem then. Yeah. So being loyal to your team who are fighting for the right stuff has been a big part of our success and never quitting on them. In the face of them quitting on themselves, which Matt's been through, like a couple of times, just it, he didn't feel he was worth it. Yeah. And just me and also a couple of other people. Yeah. Just staying in line with him and staying yeah. with him and same for anybody else who's in our first team. Yeah. They've been through that. I so, could have quit. Yes, I, I, I if I had made tried a dumb less, decision. if I had tried less hard, and JP yeah. had tried less hard, yeah. I imagine that would have happened. And I, and I think that the challenging thing for a lot of people in in businesses like this, or in our business, is their friends are generally in the beginning not a values match for this. Uh, so I would have people in my ear saying, "You still oh, have people." Yeah, yeah. I just don't listen anymore. Yeah. But that would say you need to take more time off, and I can't believe that. And they ask you to work on the weekend. I remember someone said to me once. <laughs> Yeah, I know. I remember someone said to me once, I'm not going to say who it was, but um, I said something like, um, I'm just want to check, check if my pay's gone through. And it wasn't even, because um, I've never been paid anything but just on time and yeah. just, if anything, it's early and I'm always taken care of. So but, he has, um, JP has a policy, you get paid early if there's a weekend? Yeah. He's just, and a public holiday, it's like, just a standard policy, it's yeah, going to be early. I full, yeah, anyway. And, and he's just phenomenal and just mm. always takes care of Takes care of business. I said, I didn't even say a reality of, I think I'm a day late. It wasn't even that. It was, let me just check if it's gone through. And the comment was, you know, if it doesn't go through, you can get on the ombudsman. <laughs> like you can make it, you can make a complaint. Like that's the, the mindset that most people have. And I was just like, chill. Yeah. I'm just checking my bank account. <laughs> like it, it's, but that's yeah. a lot of my values. I come from those values. So I've had to learn what does it mean to be loyal? What does it mean to be trustworthy? Mm. What does it mean to be honest? What does it mean to have each other's back? What does it mean to actually mean it? Yeah. What does it mean to be in for the long term? What does it mean to assume best intentions from me? Yeah. And me assume best intentions in you? Yeah. What if that takes a huge amount of reset, yeah. reset, yeah. reset. Yeah. When we let each other down or we let it, let ourselves down. It's okay. Reset on trust again. Let's go mm. again. And just mm. doing that day after day. If there was a while there, we were doing it every day mm. until we figured out how to be functional. <laughs> but you're right, it all begins with you got to have something to work with. Mm. <laughs> Give me someone who's going to go the distance through the tough stuff so we can get to the good stuff. Yeah. And most people don't stay through the tough stuff. 
Mm. They just want the good stuff. That's right. So a lot of people join saying, I love your values. I love your environment. I love the culture you've created. And Matt always says, do you understand how that culture is created? Well, the company. Can anyone touch a company? Yeah. Is it the walls? The walls don't fucking run the culture. Is it the incorporation paperwork? A company is yeah, people. Us. So culture is created by people. They say, I want to be part of that great culture. No, no. You have to bring this great culture. You can't come along and just parasite on the side of Matt and me and just soak up our good stuff. Yeah. You've got to bring it. Yeah. We've got to hand the torch to you. That's right. Or the culture just dies. Yeah. And our, so, our best hires don't warm up. That's my favorite thing. Mm. Our best hires, that we say the same thing about all of our best hires, is uh, two weeks in, it'll be a wow meeting. Yeah. And someone will wow them and say, I want to wow you because it feels like you've always been here. Yeah. Because they're just in. Yeah. Bad hires, they say, I knew, I knew, I knew, I knew. Yeah. That's their excuse for the whole fucking I love that. Night. I love that's a really great distinction. Yeah. Uh, the other thing I think that's really made it significant for our long term success, because this now is in this industry, ridiculously long success, is we're so clear on what our market wants and how to make sure we deliver it. That's a huge part of it. Yeah. The commercial reality, but also just the joy of knowing our market, knowing our market so well better than often they know themselves, and knowing what they want and they'll recognize it as valuable. We do that so well. And we have worked so hard to define our market. You know that the avatar is Jackie. Did you know this? Yes. Front row wouldn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <I'm free>. <laughs> <laughs> totally got this. So in every business, there is an avatar, which is your ideal client that you would do business with every single day and should do business with you. Our ideal avatar is 50 something year old woman who wants to see change without moving to the sea, whose husband is probably doing something professional and has felt left out. Kids are growing up and not feeling that perhaps the next steps are clear to them, has put themselves last on the list for a very long time, way too long, now knows they need to go first, doesn't know quite how to do it, doesn't know if it'll be through coaching, but knows they need to go to a place where they can be shown how to rock and that redemption is possible for them. How'd I go? Yes. <laughs> Who relates, even though you might be yeah. male? Show of hands. Yeah. Hopefully. Yeah, okay, okay. Wow, well, that was harsh. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It's all right. I'm not it's all good. It's, it's all okay. Good. She'll forget in about a minute or two. I'll forget. What was that? Yeah, so we know our market and we know how to help our market feel that sense of redemption that you, you can reset. It's what I needed. And so we, if we do that really well over and over again, we're going to get known for doing that really, really well over and over again. Mm. Whereas I see others in this space not thinking about that. They're thinking, what product can I build that I can sell? Yeah. It's irrelevant. Yeah. It's not that. It's what's going to rock. Yeah. What's going to be generous? What's going to be perceived as valuable? Yeah. What's going to give opportunity for people to come together and be their best and bring their inner freak and rock out? Like that's so much more important than it's a product. Yeah. With content. Do yeah. you feel me? Yeah. yeah. Like so do you reduced. reckon you're going to handle, get, are you going to get through all the content in your programs? No. If you're saying yes, no. <laughs> so it's not the content and don't worry about it. It's the experience you learn to give yourself, which you let, then learn to give others. That's it. People buy experiences, they don't buy content. Mm -hmm. They buy the experience match. That's exactly what you described to me in the corridor. Yeah. Do you remember? Yeah. Word for word, this is, I can, and, and there was someone else, you did, you as well, exactly this conversation. And, oh. Oh, you think don't help her. <laughs> Marisa. Yay! Yay! That's a big deal. It's four days in the building. <laughs> All of you are sharing with me in your own ways. It's the experience that's a match that you recognized in Matt is what they were saying. And in Joe, someone who was unselfconscious, available, and present. Yeah. yeah. That's the experience our, who we want to hang with want to experience. Yeah. That's who we should hang with. Does that make sense? Yeah. And you should hang with people who get that. Yeah. We're a match. You, we should do business together, not with someone who doesn't value that because we're not going to feel we're getting the experience. Is this making sense? Yeah. So TCI, a big part of TCI is 
man, you dig that? We should totally hang. Yeah. It's that. It really isn't more complicated than that. We should hang. We're going to create something wonderful together because we are aligned in terms of the experiences we want to have. Yeah. And there's a lot of forgiveness in that space. So we don't all get it right. TCO gets it wrong. We don't get back to you sometimes as fast as you'd like. It's actually pretty good. You guys are doing really yeah, well. But really every well. now and again, email slips through the cracks. We're human. Yeah. Whatever, not making excuses. It happens. But we know we have a posse with us who's forgiving of that because of that. Mm. Because we're a match. Mm. We know you're going to be forgiving. Mm. The same as we're forgiving when you don't follow through on your commitment. That's right. We're going to reset the same as Matt and I have over and over again thousands of times. We give each other that gift. So we have a community who we call it stay, pay, and play. So this is getting to commercial reality. We have a model of we want you to join us. Then we want you to stay because how are you going to get value if you don't stay? So we need you to stay. We want you to play because how do you get best results in the coaching space? It's not. <laughs> is it? If there's an irreverence yeah. to it, we want you to pay, obviously, meet your commitments. And then we want you to tell everybody about it so more people can come and repeat the pattern. That's what we want. So who do we need to be to make that a reality? And how we are is makes that a reality then how do you need to be you need to be a values match you need to be recognizing humanity that we are flawed and so are you how am i doing here because if you don't give us that courtesy we're not going to risk if you hold me or Matt to a standard where we have to be perfect and we can't make mistakes, mm -hmm. how can we soar right now? How can we play for that? How can we be this commercially available to you and yeah. transparent about our numbers if you're judging? Yeah, or waiting so, for us to trip up. Waiting for us to, oh, that's not the number you said last week. So you've got to be as forgiving on us as we for you. We should be together if you're like that. And that tends to be all the time, and the experiences it, we have everywhere in the it world. makes it the best. It makes it the best. So the more you forgive us to be human and see our humanity, the more mistakes we'll take, which means the more risks we're taking, which means the better we get. Yeah. Now, if we're doing that, we create a space where you can do that. Yeah. We're going to expect that from you. Have you made enough mistakes today? <laughs> Andrew, how's your mistake quote? It's like, well, yeah, I'm not really risking. Well, hey, you know how we're writing. Let's risk it. The conversation can open up. How am I doing here? Yeah, there's freedom in it. There's freedom in it versus... I'm going to do it. You don't need to tell me there's spelling mistakes in the manuals. They still come. Do you think we have access to editors? Yeah, no, but do you think we have access to editors? Yes. Yes or no? Yes. Do you think all the spelling mistakes by now could have been fixed? Yes. yes. Do you think perhaps <laughs> it's deliberate? Yes. Hmm. Why? Because it, we're not perfect. And if you're going to get hung up on a spelling mistake, is the reason you're not going to live your life's purpose. Yes. We're not a match. <laughs> I remember one of them. How am I doing here? <laughs> if that's the thing that's f***ing you up, yeah. that I say, on stage, that's going to prevent you living your dream? <laughs> Where the f***'s your dream? How am I doing it? You traded your dream for four letters in a particular sequence. <laughs> Are we getting perspective here? Yeah. Hence me being as flawed as I can, publicly as I can, as often as I can. I don't want to be ever seen as on the pedestal or any of that nonsense because if you can see the raw, the real, the transparent, the flawed, I say the word. But I am too opinionated. I am apparently way too assertive for a female. Yes. <laughs> All the personality. Yes. To, yes. It needs to be so much more lovely. Yeah. Supportive. <laughs> <laughs> Let me talk more. <laughs> 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 Please let me tell you how amazing you are. Yeah, thanks yeah. so much. Thank you, thank, you, thank, you, thank you. So it's so important that we're bringing this flawed self to you so you can be free to bring that flawed self to yourself. That's the path to redemption. That's the path to ourselves. When we see that we're flawed, we can still be amazing. Yeah. We can still serve. You know, serve while you suck. That's yeah. the key to it. You've got to serve while you suck. Yeah. So we're doing our best to bring that. So the spelling mistakes metaphor is there. Yeah. So you realize the stuff that matters isn't in your way. 
That's it. That's it's, the stuff that doesn't matter. It's me not, not learning how to spell still yeah. now. You even probably haven't recognized the spelling I can, mistakes. I can. I, yeah, I don't see them. <laughs> I, I, I train people in Meta One how to do the spelling strategy. Yeah. And I still make spelling mistakes myself. Yeah. But I, ha I have to keep it. I have. I, I like holding on to yeah. it. And especially the first time I meet someone, I'll write a really simple word like architect. And I'm like, have I got it right? I did it. Yeah. And I'm doing it to playfully. And I imagine there's people in there thinking, what's going on here? <laughs> even know how to spell do you, that. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, like, is, what, is this a serious business? Are they for real? Yeah, you know? how dare they not know how to spell a basic word like that? Totally. Man, if they're going to get the spelling right, what else are they getting wrong? Yeah. We're going to have to help that person yep. to realise that what matters is not in their way. Yeah. That what is getting in their way is the shit that doesn't matter. Yeah. yeah. And the moment we learn to care about what matters, we move forward. With that, as a wonderful segue to yeah. our conclusion, thank you, everybody, for participating in this podcast. Yeah, thank, thank you, you Glenn, for thank introducing you so us so beautifully. I trust this is valuable. Can we thank the phenomenal Mr. Matt Lavas for you. being here and sharing his wisdom? Thank you. thank you. And can we thank the amazing Sharon Pearson? Yeah. I trust you got value from this podcast. We had so much fun and delighted in bringing it to you and for you and for your loved ones. If you haven't yet, your subscription would be absolutely fantastic. Your subscription and your feedback means that we get to rate higher. If we get to rank higher, more people get to hear this message. You can also help out if you'd love to once you subscribe by sharing this podcast with someone who you believe this message may resonate with and create a discussion around it. Just enjoy it and interact with it however you choose but most importantly we'd love your subscription see you the next episode